Hi guys, it's me, Rusty78609, Central Texas, USA. I know the lighting is crap. I just got out of the shower and my face is all oiled up with mineral oil. That's the way I do. So having said that, it's Sunday afternoon sometime. The sun's about 45 minutes from setting, as in going down. And I got a comment here from Cajun Jameis. I did. One of these many comments, which I appreciate. Thank you, Cajun. I do like your comments. And uh, I thought I'd respond to it. And, and don't worry about the lighting. I'm not worried about it myself. You don't need to see me because you know what I look like. And that's all you need to know. But uh, his comment is good. Uh, the weather is perfect, by the way. And I've got my Max Air fan going. Perfect. It's nice, nice, nice. But anyway, oh, also, again, my little ad, i got to get my ad in, reminding you to use the Amazon link in the description of my videos. Why? Two reasons. One is uh, because YouTube is, you know, demonetized. Well, not totally demonetized, and they just say that my videos are not suitable for all advertisers, and then that lasts for a few days and then comes back up. <clears throat> but anyway. So use the Amazon link in the description. I'm an Amazon affiliate, and I get a small commission. doesn't cost you a dime, as in zero. And if you choose to use it, pat yourself on the back. So having said that, Cajun says, Rusty, another action-packed video. He's referring to the new RV or video I did earlier today, but I'll post this video tomorrow, Monday. Uh, I read an article about how they are popping the new RVs out. Seems as though the manufacturers can't keep up with the demand. Along with that, quality workmanship is being neglected. I can believe it. And uh, not only is the demand coming from the baby boomers, but young folks living and working out of their vans and RVs. Stick housing is very expensive and hard for the younger folks to get into. My question to you, guru, he calls me a guru, uh, guru ram man, is down the road say five years where do you think this is all going not to mention in this in the article uh, it talks about high prices of rv parks and big crowded conditions mainly east coast i believe that the busiest park in the united states is smoky mountains national park in the east of the u.s that's the busiest national park of all of them believe it or not check it out uh it talks about da, 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 be that as it may your setup, home base, looks like the future in being a full-timer. What say you? Well, I say you're probably right. However, getting a place like I've got is going to get harder and harder. Why? Because they're going to restrict them. You're not going to be able to find many places like it. It's hard to find them now. I mean, you can't find a place you can park an RV and live in. Most states, or not about the states, but counties, uh, have uh, ordinances that... <clears throat> preclude you living uh, full-time in a RV on a piece of property. Even if it has a full hookup, doesn't matter. They want you to be in a mobile home or a uh, factory-made home of some kind, preferably site-built, and that's the way that is because it all boils down to this. Property taxes, if you're living in an RV, they're not getting any property taxes because you're exempt, okay, because it's mobile, all right, and in a mobile home, if if you if you take the wheels off, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna tag you with property tax. And in my area, they pretty much do anyway. All mobile homes and property taxes are going up 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 because what you know more and more population. You know people coming here from other countries. There's just more of us, and the land hasn't gotten any bigger. We have got the same amount of space. So that's you know it's, you know, it's demand. You know the demand for the land is there, and uh, the prices are going up. Property taxes go right up with them. But as far as RVing out in the West, uh, you're still, in my opinion, I'll tell you where this, in my opinion, where it's headed. If you don't have a reservation at a state park or a national park, you're not going to be able to get in. Okay? Every site is going to be reserved. Every, everything will be reserved. And it'll be all be done over one system, and they're going to charge you a fee for reserving a site in addition to the site fee. They already do that in Texas. They do it in New Mexico and other places too. When you go to use their reservation system, there is a fee. It's all about moving money from your pocket to somebody else's. And whoever, who owns those little uh, companies that do the reservations, you, you don't want to know. But anyway, so what happens is 
uh, say five years down the road, that was your question. Uh, you know, what's happening is, and, and it, it's just sad almost, because what we're doing, we're squeezing the poor folks to death. You know, the, the people are getting poorer, so they say, oh, great, I'll just sell my house or my or condo or move out of my apartment and move into a van or something I can afford and go live on public land or go stay in, you know, state parks or somewhere where I can stay cheaper. Well, they, they close, and then they close that door. And, you know, this is not happening only in the United States, it's happening all over the world. Uh, there's, it, it's just, it's just pure and simple greed, and, and that's sad. But for us RVers, full-timers like me, you know, five years from now, it's just going to be more difficult to find a spot. That's all. I mean, that's it. I mean, and Walmart's not going to put up with it much more. I can tell you that. It's just a matter of time till you pull into a Walmart and you're going to get one of those little red stickers on your window from the police department for you to get the hell out of there. Okay? Period. And uh, <clears throat> and I can't really blame Walmart because, you know, they, they don't want people living out there in their parking lot. You know, they're in business. And, and other places, too. you got hardware places and truck stops and places. And as they get cra more crowded by the RVers coming in because they can't find a place to camp, uh, they're going to start shutting their doors, too, because they're not going to put up with that crap because it runs their customers off and they're in business. As far as boondocking, you know, the last resort of humanity, I, I see the government coming down on that. Uh, you know, what will happen is, is uh, the Bureau of Land Management will all of a sudden uh, either start charging for every type of site or option two, uh, they will just make it prohibitive for you to go there. They, they, they'll they just shut it down. They'll say, you know, this site is no longer available for overnight camping or whatever. How long will that be? I don't know. Because what that does is that forces those people, me, to rent an apartment, number one, or build a home or buy some property and start paying property taxes. Because that's what it's all about is driving the cattle back into the pen and making them pay. So, uh, yeah, but the demand for RVs is up. I mean, I had to wait eight weeks for this little old sticks thing I got. I mean, it ain't much to it at all. And I could probably sell it for more than I paid for it. But here's something else that people aren't snapping to right now. If you think the prices of RVs are getting high now, you know, right now, of course, I got mine for under $10,000, and that's unbelievable, a brand new one. Of course, it doesn't have anything. But I promise you, uh, people are missing the bet. I've got a 2000, I'm not, this is not another ad, I'm just pointing out. I've got a 2013 Jayco J Flight 26 foot bunkhouse cream puff, and uh, it's up for sale. And of course, in my area, you know, out here in the middle of West Texas almost, there's not many people, you know, looking for RVs, and it'll probably eventually sell. I'm not concerned about it. But, uh, those units are going to be snapped up because people want used units. Why would you want to go pay twenty thousand dollars for a brand new unit when you can get a, a used one for ten or eleven thousand dollars and uh, live in it just as comfortably as the new one? And uh, and, and and nothing's changed. But uh, yep, it's a uh, that is a you, that's a good comment you made. I don't know where you found that article, but uh, it's very true because I've noticed it over the past four or five years camping that. Uh, Every place I go, even boondocking, man, even and even dispersed camping in the national forest, you know, where you used to be able to go down a road, I mean, a bad road, and, uh, you know, pull out and and never see a car all day. That ain't going to happen now, or at least I didn't see it. You know, I was in uh, the national forest around Flagstaff and some other places, and hell, it was like a, a busy highway zoom 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 and if you weren't on the right side of the road to keep the dust out of your rv you made a big mistake because you know that's something i always point out when you're when you're boondocking just be sure that you know which way the wind's blowing if you're off a dirt road because you may sit there all day and eat dirt but anyway so the demand it's not only coming from the yeah you're talking about young folks living and working out of their vans and rvs that's true because they can now I mean, a lot of these people make a living off the internet. A lot of them are doing YouTube channels and getting by on very little. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, and some of them are, you know, in retired people that are, don't have enough social security to be able to live in an apartment or buy a home or live in a home. And so they're driven out into the, 
uh, the, the, the forests and the other places. So again, in summary, I would say that as you point out, it's going to get busier. I totally agree with that. And it's all supply and demand. If the, if the demand goes up and the supply remains the same, the price is going to go up. Okay, so instead of paying $30 a night for a, an RV park overnight, you're going to pay 60 okay? I guarantee you. And, and, and when you and go into a state park, once they realize that their sites are full uh, all the time, it's not going to take a mental giant to say, let's raise the price. And they will, and it'll still stay full. And uh, that's the way it goes. So it, all of a sudden, a state park in New Mexico that used to cost you $10 a night is going to cost you 20 or 30 or whatever they can get. And the same way at the national parks. Yeah, but unfortunately, the, you know, the national parks still have that senior pass. But for the younger folks, you know, they, they, they're going to have to pay full tilt. And, uh, but yeah, it's just going to get more costly and, and more crowded. And uh, so, but again, I'm 72 years old. And I, I think I can get another, you said five years. Five years would probably just about finish it up for me. Yeah. Because, you know, one of the concerns for me, and I know this is not your uh, related to your question, but, but it will be for other people too. Uh, as, as you get older, you know, you, you, you're not as good a driver as you were before and all that sort of stuff. You know, your eyes are bald, gets harder, and you don't focus as quick. So if you are starting to become a danger, not only to yourself but other people, uh, get off the road. Do yourself, do yourself a favor. You know, get off the road. Don't do it. And uh, But I live in a rural area, not much traffic, so I'll get by for a while. And then I'm hoping five years from now that they're going to have that self-driving car stuff down. I mentioned that in a video I did this morning. And I'll just transition from a gasoline-powered, no-nothing vehicle to a all-electric, no-everything, and take-me-everywhere vehicle. You know, I'll do that. So anyway, Cajun, it's beer 30, by the way. Uh, thank you very much for your comment. And uh, unfortunately, things are always changing. Now, the, the thing that would moderate it, is a lot of people can't do without a lot of the amenities. You know, they're, they're, you know, let's just say that there's a hundred RVers in a group. There's only probably, I would say, at max 20% that are going to want to do dry camping or boondocking full time and travel around to different spots. That other 80% is looking for partial hookups or full hookups. Or, or state parks or national parks, and that's the way they go camping, and that's it. And uh, so that helps a lot. So the growth of that smaller portion, that 20%, is not going to be as exaggerated as the other 80%. I think the other 80% uh, is going to grow much faster than the 20% that are boondocking or dry camping, because I don't see a whole lot of interest there. There is interest, don't get me wrong, and, and it is getting busier, but it's, it's a small, in my opinion, a slower growth rate than the people like I've been talking to that want to buy my RV. You know, they're ready to go to the national parks, state parks, and, uh, you know, full hookup RV parks, but they're not ready to go uh, dry camping. I guarantee you, none of them, none of them I've talked to that, want to that have been interested in my RV that I have for sale have said, oh, I'm just dreaming about going dry camping or boondocking or in the forest. None of them, not one. And uh, so I think that's where the uh, real full-timers are going to head. And I think solar, thank goodness, the price keeps coming down. And people are going to use it more and more and more. And there's a lot of cute things like that Max, fair, Max fan I've got. Makes it really enjoyable. i got my Domatic refrigerator inside again. I'm using it as a freezer again. And I've got my little 110 refrigerator but enough said about that Cajun makes a good point guys so all you people that are just starting out or fixing to start RVing be aware of that uh, you know uh, you you probably I've mentioned this before in New Mexico right now there are some RV parks or state parks that if you want to go camping at and you want any type of hookup at all uh, if you don't have, have a reservation you ain't gonna get one for next summer already 2018 is booked booked okay and you'll find that at a lot of them. so in other states but anyway Thank you, Cajun, for your comment, and uh, thank you guys that use the Amazon link. Thumbs up, Carpe Diem, adios, bye-bye from Central Texas, USA. Uh, 
drink plenty of water. Three or four quarts a day will not hurt you. It's good for you. It'll help you avoid gout, kidney stones, and help you lose weight. How will it do that? Because you'll be full of water and you won't want to eat so much. So the next thing is take deep breaths. Breathe in through your nose. A good deep breath. You know, way down, hold it for a few seconds, and then breathe out through your mouth. Why? Because that relieves stress, and relieving stress does what? Lowers your blood pressure. And so that helps. That's good for you to lower your blood pressure. Trust me on that. you got to know that. So anyway, and then in addition to that, you know, stretch, 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 walk, walk, walk. You know, do whatever you got to do. Keep your body in motion and enjoy your life the best you can. You know, and as far as worrying about this crowded, these crowded parks, I'm not worried about it at all. You know, the worst thing that happens is I come back to my home base and live happily ever after. I've got, you know, a, a eight months of perfect weather. The only time it's bad here in Central Texas is July, August, and most of September. June's not too bad. It can be, but most of the time June is tolerable. But having said that, enjoy your day, guys. Adios. Bye-bye.